Welcome to Massonomics, the world's strongest podcast. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Massonomics. Make sure you go visit Massonomics.com. There you'll find the rest of our powerful content. While you're there, check out our store and buy yourself some of that sweet Massonomics gear. It'll kind of be a surprise. Hey, speaking of surprises, everybody, <laughs> we are actually rolling right now. Uh, we have special guest. Just kidding. This is just Tommy sitting next to me here, hey, right? Hey, how's it going? Actually, oh, I would... what does he say? What's what, going on? What, what up? What up? What up? <laughs> we have we have Tommy's brother. We have the handsomer of the DeFays. Thank you. Is that arguable? Arguably, handsomer? I don't think there's anything to argue about. I think it's just the way it is. It kind of. I mean, I don't know. It just depends on what you're into. That's true. Yeah. Some some maybe ladies people, aren't into the height or the the height, and some maybe aren't into all that hair. I'm sure there's some people that don't find either one of us attractive. You know, that's I, it could I happen. Don't I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I find that pretty hard to believe. Okay, well. Coming from two guys, <laughs> two men, two. We uh, we just like to watch a lift. So thank you in a weird way, but yes. Last time you were here, the studio was upstairs. Yeah, there was no video, and now we're downstairs, so we can look really uncomfortably into the camera. Yeah. There we are. There it is. <laughs> so that's what we look like. Pretty sweet. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, hello. If you're listening to this. Check it out on YouTube, and if you think we're ugly, go back to listening to this. And uh, you got you having trouble there? Oh, I had it. You're good now. In too far. It's good now. If you haven't heard, I would say we have this problem every single episode, at least once. Mm-hmm. That we have uh, the headphones. The headphones. Our stuff only. I have like half my cords are the wrong cords, so we'll only get one ear in our headphones until we sort of unplug the headphones just a little bit. Um, mainly because really we don't sweet spot. Yeah, yeah. mostly because we don't spend any actual money on this podcast at all. So. What? Well, yeah, no one's buying our <laughs> shirts. Speaking of buying our shirts, go to massonomics.com and buy some of our shirts with money. <laughs> with your parents' money. <laughs> yeah, we don't really care whose money. Your it paper is. out money. <laughs> Steal someone's credit card. Yeah, why not? So identity theft never hurt anyone. Never. Speaking of identity theft, you just got back from Mexico. I just got back from Mexico, uh-huh. and I'm going to cancel all my credit cards now. Oh, no. No, I don't have any issues there, but um, I did just spend a week in Mexico and a day and a half in the Atlanta airport. <laughs> so, What part was more fun? The best way to end any vacation. We, <laughs> I, I think I've explained the travel arrangement before, right, where my wife works at the airport, so we can only fly when there's open seats. So... There was no fucking open seats anywhere. So traveling that way, like you can spend six days in just wonderful relaxation and have a wonderful time. And then when you're done, just getting home can fucking ruin all of it. You know, you can come home worse off than you were. And we were real close. Yeah. Real close. We ended up flying to Wisconsin like late, 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 late last night and then got up super early and were able to get to Minneapolis and then back home. So... Um, but Mexico's pretty awesome. It's also kind of shitty in some places. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the beaches are pretty sweet. And the beer was um, pretty cheap, too. What about Taco Bell? Is the Taco Bell very or ta- good there? Ta- what's better there, Taco Bell or Taco John's? That is true. It could be regional I think, kind of thing. You know what I just forgot, guys? That West Mex. It's maybe a little more Mex in Mexico. I yeah. didn't notice it until I turned it off, but my furnace has been running this entire time. <laughs> I'm going to say, I'm been loud take, as yeah, shit. Yeah. I take my sweatshirt off. It's getting kind of hot. I'm going to I'm gonna turn that off while you guys talk about oh, uh, the, ben- the argue between Taco Bell and Taco John's. I was just going to say, oh, look at me. My name is Tyler. I control my furnace from my cell phone. Yeah, cause... what is that? I wish what I, year are we in here? Two thousand thirty. It's the Jetsons. <laughs> Do you have a robot made? I you, may or may not have a bit work, of a background in heating and air conditioning. Do you work for Space Lee Sprockets? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything else about the Jetsons, so I don't know. That was it. I, he that, has a dog name. What's the dog's name? Elroy. I don't know if that's the son or the no, dog. That's the son, okay. isn't it? I think. I don't know. I haven't seen that show in like a long. It's time. a lot better than the Flintstones, though. What do you like better, Jetsons or Flintstones? I don't know. I haven't seen either one. I watched the Flintstones movie, like the live action movie, not too long ago, and you mean like the nineteen ninety seven John Goodman? Yeah, and, yeah. 
yeah. <laughs> with, is that the one with Rick Moranis? Yep. And, and then uh, Rosie O'Donnell yeah. and Kyle, what's his face? Kyle McLaughlin. He's like the bad guy, I guess you could say. Like Halle yeah, Berry. He, Halle he, Berry's yes, secretary. Yeah, yeah. His secretary. Yeah, right. But... Good movie. God, that's not good at all. You just like when you it's like one of those movies when you're a kid, like, oh, this is cool. And then you get older and you watch it and you just how did I ever like this? It sucks. What what about another movie that just came out on Netflix? Um Heavyweights. Oh, that's, that holds up, that doesn't is, it? Yeah, that's that, still, that, that, I would that say that's care. even better. Just yeah. kind of, and not that the humor is even very, you know, mature or anything. Like there's just some stuff as a kid, I'm like that's funny. And then like watch it again, like this is so stupid. Like when he's like in the beginning when he gets to the camp and he's like, ah, oh, I snuck in some Oreos. I'm like, oh, okay. Download. Chipmunks, download. download. Yeah. And then it's like all these kids just scrambling and putting this candy away and all these like hiding spots. And then the kid, hey, hey, kid, get over here. Get these salamis off my back. And he's, got, he's just like deli meats what, taped to his back. It's do like, fat kids even want like just like warm deli meats? A salami? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe that's a treat. Uh, that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is yes, yeah. they do. I mean, that yeah. also, I think, I think that is as funny of Ben Stiller in that as you're ever gonna that, find. Yes, and I, we were talking about that the other day. Like the character, the character in that movie, and then the character in Dodgeball are basically the same guy. Yeah, Pretty he rather. really is. He's he, like, oh, just be that guy I was six years ago. Okay, yeah, I'll do like that he's again. Like a, some fitness expert that's just crazy and just to- and terrible with people. He wasn't big, but he was pre- like, I don't. Like he was versus in good shape. now, I was like, "Wow, Ben Stiller was kind of ripped." Yeah, you know, definitely. I was a little bit surprised. He looked pretty athletic. Yeah, like, but yeah, that is the funniest Ben Stiller that you're gonna. I think for it sure. Doesn't, so. It doesn't yeah. ever get better than that. You know? I love the part when like they're introducing him at the beginning, and he comes out and he's like, "Being homeschooled my whole life, this is actually my first time interacting with children." It's like, <laughs> what would make a person even want to run a camp like that? It's like, it just makes no sense. But well, he good. was just making a promotional video, though. Is oh, so that's true. Yeah, he had an ulterior motive. Perkis, Perkisizing. <laughs> fucking Tony Perkis. Feeling skinny, Uncle Tony. <laughs> oh, that's another La- thing. Lars. Yeah, yeah, Lars. Oh, we were talking about like yeah. how the the fitness, like Tony Perkis, Perkisizing people were like, like what were we saying the other day? Like, well, I just thought like Lars that character is supposed to be like a big guy. Yeah. And I sat at home and watched it the other day with uh, with my wife, and I was like. I think I remember that thinking that guy was big, and he's just like he's he just a, has like good a, posture. Yeah. Like walks walks with his walks with his arms like this. Yeah, I'm pretty like, sure he probably has never lifted before. Yeah. So if you want to look huge, you just have to have like solid posture. Mm-hmm. He's very like, upright. A German act, or like <laughs> yeah. Was it, was it supposed to be like a really weak play on Arnold? Was that what that no, was? No, he doesn't to be? look anything like him. I no. mean, he's just. I don't know. Just, just you can European. tell that he was pro- he was supposed to kind of be big and intimidating, but he just wasn't. Actually. But it actually never even says where he's from because no. they're like Lars. Like he's, he introduced himself, but like all the kids are laughing. They're like, "Oh, where are you from?" And he's like, "Far away." Like he never <laughs> even says like where he's from. And then they put the honey on him when he's like tied up in the woods at the end of the movie. Yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> I love you. Like, trying to be their friends. So we've talked about heavyweights. We're eight minutes into our heavyweights Enough. conversation in this episode. <laughs> this is a good movie, though, still. It, it does carry. <laughs> Judd Apatow, I think it was actually his first movie that he directed. You might know him no shit. from The 40-Year-Old Virgin or some of other movies that he makes that are Bridget Jones' hour Diary 2. Yeah. <laughs> All those other the movies, that are, play movies that are a half hour too long. Is that what you're going to say? What's, yeah, what's Child's movie? Play? Is that with the babies that Chucky. talk? Oh, oh okay. <laughs> That's baby That's look who's talk- No, look who's talking. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> baby look Jesus who's talking movies. too. No, I do like his movies. Funny People. That's a good one. That's one of those movies where people uh, always say that it's way too long because it just drags on. But I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> movie stuff. <laughs> movies. This is dragged on too long. Maybe. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we've got so basically, guys. We've got fifty more minutes. We're just going to talk about Westworld, and uh, that's going to be it. Well, I've never watched that. I, I Let's mean, talk about just, it. I want to we say something talk. else. But like about a month or two ago, you guys were kind of talking about um, how you need to start. Stranger, watching. No, Stranger. Oh Things. yeah, 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 yeah. And now I've 
since watched Stranger Things. Yeah. So I'm just going to be at kind of like two or three months behind whatever's pretty cool. Right when I thought it, you were right going to say it, that you just started watching like Breaking Bad or something like <laughs> no, that. No, no, I have seen Breaking Bad. Right. We can talk about that. Right when okay. it finally becomes officially played out, nobody yeah, gives a yeah. shit. Yeah, then guys, it's like, oh, seen this Tanner's going to be like, guys, awesome. can we, we talk about that again? We should do the mannequin challenge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's wait on that. Okay, yeah, we want to wait till it's a little cooler, like a little, a little more in. But yeah, so I, uh, I, I went to Mexico, and that was I left like the morning. Actually, technically the night I finished the. We had a partners CrossFit competition at our gym in town, which obviously I'm not physically like equipped for. If you're no, watching on no, video, you like, I'm built like your average CrossFit <laughs> fella. Just like plus a foot and a half. I'm like and... two. I'm yeah, like you're two. Tall. I'm like two. Like cross literally, if you just stacked a couple on top yeah. of each other. Yeah. You know, so like put a trench coat on them. And <laughs> so I've box. I've already kind of like like just <laughs> barely. <laughs> Keep going. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I just barely got through like a a couple week long or like just kind of this back thing, and I was fucking. I think getting pretty beat up from a long time of just going constantly. So I was like, I'm. Mm-hmm. And take it easy, get to this competition, survive it, and then just not do shit while I was in Mexico. Which doing going a week without doing anything is pretty unheard of for me. Going right. really going more than two days off is pretty unheard of. So um I feel fantastic. I don't know if all of the drinking that I did probably was in my best interest. Mm-hmm. But um Are you gonna work out tomorrow? Yeah. How do you think it's gonna go? That's I'm gonna, gonna feel f- that's gonna suck, I think. What are you gonna do? I think do you my, think your body's gonna feel fresh? My well? body will feel fresh. I think my deadlifts and squats will probably feel okay. Um, but when I get into some conditioning, is where I mean, I, gonna, do you have some out, some booze that'll sweat out for a couple I just, days? I usually have like one day of punishment. Like if I party on a Friday or Saturday night, my Monday fucking is just you still still feeling me. it? Yeah, yeah, like especially when you get to some conditioning, like mm-hmm. I. I I have to pay for it on that day, and then I can move on. But a week, this will be a bad day mm-hmm. for sure. Because, I mean, we were – I mean, there were some days that I got drunk like three separate times. You know? In one day. Yeah. You know, so – After a while, it's hard to really be drunk. Like af- like if you're on vacation. It only takes – You just kind of always are drinking. It only takes more booze, yeah. which, <laughs> which is even more taxing on yeah. you. But it wasn't uncommon to have like – you know, a couple Bloody Marys and a couple beers before we'd go to the beach by 10 a.m. And then maybe like eight beers by one and then come back. And one of the days, our wives, both my buddy who went down with us, our wives decide to nap after lunch. So they go up, they go to the condo, they nap. We're like, well, we'll just go down to the pool, which is in our complex there. And, mm-hmm. and we'll just hang out at the pool while you guys nap. And uh, they nap for like an hour and a half, two hours, and they come down to the pool when we're done. And uh, we were completely fucking housed. <laughs> like, so they went to sleep, and probably, we were just it was probably we were just the sun. Yeah, I'm sure. But they were that they Mexican were not sun. they weren't terribly Soul. impressed that we were like <clears throat> wasted, like not really all that able to crawl mm. out of the pool. <laughs> you had too much fun. You had to wear a life jacket to be in the pool. And that's how messed up you were. That was that was that was real. Tyler, get your wings on. <laughs> but. Um, what do they? What do you drink for beer there? What do they? It's what do they awful. Have? Uh, Dos Equis and Tecate right. or Soul. Yeah. Do and they have any uh, like American you, domestic beers? You so, could uh, get some American beer at the Walmart, but because it's imported, it's so much more expensive. It's not uh-huh. worth it. Yeah. Whereas you can get. I mean, the money thing was really confusing How for me too. How about Corona? Is that? Uh, I don't think that's very Mexican. Like really? it's really not. It wasn't in any any Find of the places. Beach, they're Most, not finding their beach in Mexico. That's just one like of those things. I think it's like a Texan we just Mexican make, yeah, beer. We, that's yeah. just one of those things that we Americans decide is like, yeah. just like Taco Bell. Like the yeah. like yeah. The, the Cancun airport has a huge Corona. Like the tower is painted with the Corona logo. Hmm. But who knows how long that deal's been around? Mm-hmm. They also have like four jumbo jets that are. 30 years old, rusted and bombed out, like sitting right next to the runway. Like, just looking Is like. Is that what you flew on? <laughs> looking fucking scary as shit. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a cool place until you get too far off the beaten path. That's for and then sure. It's, then you experience some. some yeah, we got, things. we had to walk to the, we went to a grocery store because the Walmart was 
we got a tip from a fellow traveler. Like, you got to go to this. This is the local grocery store. It's big. It's really nice. Here's where it is. And we thought we were close to it, but I get all confused with kilometers and such. So we just started walking according to my GPS. Mm-hmm. And then it started getting dark. And like, there's wild dogs oh, and lots the of them. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like, one crazy dog tried to attack one of us. And it was like behind a cage or like in, in, yeah. in an alley where it was caged off, sort of. And um, yeah, pretty. It that was. was those, it was those. Uh, those salamis you had, and you <laughs> I knew I, back I knew back. I shouldn't have smuggled all this American salami. And then you, you guys got back to the hotel, and you're like, "Chipmunks, <laughs> download." Get these salamis <laughs> off my back. But we, we we found this place, so I bought like shit, three bottles of liquor, two cases of beer, shit for breakfast for you know a few days worth of breakfast, and I don't know, like just a, kind of a lot of stuff. And it was like thirty dollars. Nice, you know. So thirty American dollars or thirty American dollars. Okay. Right. What's that Which in Canadian? I think it's currency? like I don't know Canadian, but I I think it's like ten thousand pesos. Actually, the no, oh, okay. no, I don't. No. I mean, I really don't. It's know, like but... it's like twenty to one down there. Okay. So Tyler, you've recently gone north of the border. You've just gone south of the border. What's what, next? What other border could we? Uh, I am hopefully going to California in, in two oh. weeks. Okay. I don't want to drop That's that. That's in America. I don't, I don't right? want to. Not technically. Not for long, apparently. Mm. Was, there, was there a wall yet? There was. <laughs> I thought. I, I think it's up already. Okay. Like they're working on it. Yeah. That'll happen overnight. Yeah. yeah. I, d- I did listen to a podcast that was, you know, I'm not political and I don't care about that. But just some, lying. something I was thought was <laughs> interesting. Like, they had, like, a, a masonry contractor, like a big... A guy that out of Texas that does really large jobs. Yeah, I think the largest, longest wall he had built was still only like five miles long or something like that. Yeah, but he he was working on estimates oh of what like you know <laughs> what it like, would, cost what it would like... actually cost to yeah. do it, and he they really never did get to a final number because he was actually trying to work with uh, future President Trump on like. He, maybe he wants to get like be contracted and he for so, the rest of his life yeah yeah but it <laughs> sounded insane like yeah. unfathomable amounts of money required yeah. to do to do that i don't i think the only way it could cost more money is if you made the wall out of money <laughs> you know yeah that, would be <laughs> that cool. might even save we're on to something uh so how about your the crossfit competition oh, that you did though what what i mean i i was there i went and checked it out it was the first one of those i've seen in person so i kind of know what you did but these people listening might not know yeah it was cool so the way the way we did it was we're kind of a smaller gym so it was basically like uh it was all partner it was like partner workouts because if you if you have an individual competition you end up needing twice as many judges and mm-hmm. you run in twice as many heats and mm-hmm. so doing it partner is a little more fun anyways and actually made it more suitable for me because my i need rest so doing partner Definitely. workouts, I can kind of like do my turn and suck and my partner will be fresh and they go. And so, um, it was pretty good. The stuff that was in my wheelhouse, we did pretty well at, you know, there was an assault bike and snatch workout. So that was, you know, we did pretty well in that one. And then there was a front squat, max front squat, double Doubles, workout. Yeah. So that was kind did of you, our, did you win that? We did win that. Did yeah. you? That's good. Yeah. When, uh, Very good. When Tyler goes on the assault bike, it's kind of like, oh man, what's he doing to that poor bike? <laughs> like, <it's, laughs> like at any time you could, you like could just rip the handles. <laughs> out. You, you, I, I kind of picture like in a movie, the camera would shoot to like the shaky bolt on Everything. the side that's about ready to yeah, just come out, and then all of a sudden the whole thing like. Flies we actually into just just got those a few weeks ago too. Yeah. So when I was start, when we were starting, like Derek, before I got on it, Derek was like. Don't break it. No, they're like they're like t- retightening everything before oh, they yeah. let me back oh, on yeah. it. Yeah, and um, I I don't think that's the way it's supposed to be. Like I don't know if maybe they just didn't use all the right tools when they put them together the first uh, time. But um, what so so those things are meant to be like if you're a big strong guy, like the three of us would probably be better than most of the guys at our CrossFit gym at that type at that's a sprinting just, for calorie output. Thing. Yeah. To do like 20 calories for time being huge is, is like, cause you can just right. put your just mass and your strength into it. If I had to go more <laughs> than that amount of time, then it's fucking over, Very tired. you know, yeah. but um, part of it though, watching, I had the thought like, yeah, I mean, you're bigger, but I was just like, 
just seems like he's trying harder. They're you know, just, like, <laughs> I'm like, he's just I'm like, he's because I'm like, trying. he's bigger, but I know those other people could move their arms faster than they are right. Part you know, of it's it like... is maybe if, if you haven't experienced the difference between yeah. the two and that's the key too. So like I, I tell everybody like that there's a, there's a drop off. Like if you're watching on the, on the YouTubes, like it doesn't go like this. The faster you go, it doesn't just translate into more calories in mm-hmm. time like that. Uh-huh. It's actually a pretty gnarly curve. It scoops up really dramatically above about 75 or 80 RPMs. Mm-hmm. So if you had to go for the most amount of calories in, say, I don't know, a minute. A, a sprint. Say, really say a, a sprint, minute. Yeah. As, as many calories yeah. you get in a minute. You're actually better off doing like 85 calories for 10 seconds and then slowing down to 50 calories get your shit together and then sprint, you know, doing that, like maybe one tenth of the time mm-hmm. or one fifth of the time sprinting and the rest kind of resting mm-hmm. than you would be if you did like Every 70 day. RPMs the, the whole, whole way. Yeah. So you want to be up in that red line if you're trying to put out calories. And, um, so it, and it is easier to do when you're huge, but <laughs> <laughs> for sure, you know, yeah, you, cause yeah. you're just moving something faster. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, because I've seen, we've done some workouts and I've seen guys that are way, way, way fitter and have way better cardio and everything than I do. Um, that there's things I can do in like, after a certain point that I can do in 15 to 16 seconds that will take them like a minute and a half, mm-hmm. you know? And that's a son of a bitch. When you're dying and you're dying on that you thing for a minute a and a half, um, you're just better off to get fresh, kill yourself on it, recover afterwards, than just let it drain you for. Yeah forever so. and, and the way it works like in that competition the, the monitor on the bike correct me if i'm wrong on this but it, it tells you calories burned and you're going once you yeah hit the and cir- that doesn't really mean no anything, no but that's, but just that's a what metric. you're doing in the competition yep. and there's no tenth of a calorie it's just, just a full a calorie single number so what you don't really know like well yeah well, that's when i was watching people <clears throat> i i could pick up on that was happening because like you you don't know when you're at 19.9, and then you can and, just kind of coast and when, out. And when you start to really suck air and just really drag ass, one calorie can take five, six seconds, yeah. which is a long time when you're suffering. Mm-hmm. So that bit becomes really bad. You're like, we're at 19. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. Oh, so, no. Whereas when I, if I go as fast as I can, I'll just – when I see 19, I stop. Because the work's already been put in, it'll mm-hmm. give me that calorie by the time it slows, by the time it winds back down. Mm-hmm. So on the assault bike, was did you go and then your partner went and you were done? No, you this this one forth, you actually had to do. Almost everything else we did was like you would go, yeah. Then your partner would go, then you would go. This one I had to do all the work, and then my partner had to do all the work, oh, and it was like okay. twenty one calories on the bike, twenty one. They were really really light power mm-hmm. snatches, and then fifteen cal on the bike, fifteen snatches, and then nine and nine. Um, but I had to pay my partner back by giving him a pretty good lead. Cause the workout before that was, uh, we each had to run a half a mile with a 20 pound medicine ball, Boo. which <clears throat> didn't sound as bad as, as it was. Okay. I, for something that's anybody can probably do if you have a 20 pound medicine ball, mm-hmm. that's fucking terrible. This and my partner so is kind of a runner and he's pretty strong. So he smokes everybody. I get that ball with like a 150 yard lead mm, yeah. and I was like, maybe, maybe I'm not going to totally fuck this yeah. up. <laughs> and so I get going through and I get, get through the first lap. So was it 400 meters down and 400 back? It was, or it was, was it? well, sort of, it was yeah. basically two 400 meter laps. Okay. The way we do it, we have to go down and back with where we're at. So it's like a, you know, 200 one way. Okay. Back. But I just wondered, cause sometimes that's different meant like, yeah, that lap, like how long the lap, the are first be lap to, I was yeah. still in front. <laughs> of everybody and then by the time i got to another 200 yards i had been passed by the guy who ended up winning because he runs like a deer <laughs> and then in the last 200 yards everybody passed me and i lost by about 100 yards like mm-hmm. i could not have shit the bed harder on so did you workout. make it about 600 pretty good and then like the last 200 was terrible or? you know i made it no i made it about 300 really good uh-huh. like at a respectable pace and then i was fucking wrecked you know my yeah. legs you couldn't even stand <laughs> up anymore and do you, i hate running i just try to avoid yeah. it as much as possible do your knees just kill after you run they don't just... my, my knees don't bug me running oh, at least God. i'm fortunate it in that terrible for me like 
we had just done a workout that had like 150 deadlifts before that yeah. though, which, so like my hamstrings didn't work right. So I was so like, I was like kind of like, like high knee in it yeah. and, and not knowing what to do with this fucking ball. Yeah, where do you put you know? it? While one of you is deadlifting, the other had to hang from the bar. Dead but, hang from yeah. the pull-up bar. I would have just, if I That's, was talking to someone else about it when I was terrible. there. Yeah, yeah. I was like, but you could divide it up however you wanted to. Okay. And yeah. if, like, you, if you dropped from the pull-up bar, you just could reset but any reps that were going on during Did while you're down right. doesn't count right. but if i was doing that i would have been like i'm gonna do about like 90 percent of the deadlift reps and you do the you know like yeah i'm not gonna do much of the hanging here yeah yeah and you see with with my back i i actually i didn't i didn't feel that strong and i sure couldn't i don't even remember what we had to do before but it was all bullshit mm-hmm. it was like 200 wall balls and then a bunch of push-ups oh. And then, and then, so I'm like heaving and breathing and my, was worried about my back. I didn't want to just, so we probably shared the deadlift load pretty, pretty evenly. Mm-hmm. But the problem is you do these deadlifts, then you hang from the pull-up bar. You don't ever get your breath back because yeah. when you're hanging, what you're doing is just suffocating. You're just tight. Still so tight, you're up there and, and it, you're, you're, you can't breathe because <laughs> your throat's getting choked, at least when you're my size. Yeah. And so it was really just trying to get through 150 deadlifts while not blacking mm-hmm. out because yeah. you can't breathe. Yeah. It's um, got to be hard on the grip too after a while. It's not really something I guess I even think about when deadlifting, I, I th- but when you're hanging there. We'll I the thought the grip time. was going to be the worst thing, but it was it was that breathing. it was that you couldn't breathe while you were hanging there. Was it the same weight the entire time for deadlifts? Yeah, it was like it was it was like 205 or something. Oh. Well, but it's a lot. That's a lot to do. That is a lot of reps. That's a lot to do 75 of, yeah. 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 I always every time I see something with that much volume I'm like, you know, if I had to pick my shoes up off the floor 75 right. times, I'd do be anything, pretty like, pissed off yeah, about it. Do anything that many times. Yeah. Tire you I mean, I certainly didn't get any fitter from that day, but it was it was kind of fun. What, which was your favorite event and which is your least favorite? Um, well, my favorite was probably the front squat one. Yeah, I, that's I, I wish I I would because yeah. it was over quick. Yeah, and I, could, I do I could double. Do, I, when I watch, I'm like, oh, I could do that. Event, yeah, no kidding. I was like, oh, it looks yeah, fun. Yeah. yeah. The double dynamic is was interesting because I never train a heavy double ever. No, you know. No. So I'm never like that's kind of weird. You know, mm-hmm. you, you smash something that you kind of, you, you want to be up there. So you, but if you barely get through one, <laughs> not feeling very like, confident it's for the next really one. hard to drop down <clears throat> again. And that's what I did with the, the weight I ended up failing on. And I was trying to stay upright and not hurt myself. And I got down and it started moving, but I knew right away that there was no way two was happening. So I just dumped got it. Out of there. Yeah. yeah. Got out um, while the getting was good. Yeah. That, was your, that was your favorite event. What'd that you, one I did like the assault bike. What did you do for the for the double three three forty five? I got three sixty five. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did yeah. see that. And I think I probably would have three sixty five. It's know, a lot different in the week. midst of a competition. Yeah, when you yeah, do that, I mean, like that's the part lifts. I think I always forget, and I always wonder, like with like powerlifting meets. Because you just, the meat I, doesn't, I just, oh, it makes a difference. The meat just, doesn't start until the bar hits the ground. Yeah, <laughs> that's spoken like a true deadlift. Yeah, yeah. but that that's the the truth, especially for some like top level guys in training. They, it, it depends on what type of person they are and how they handle programming. Some people that take a lot of singles and lift really heavy uh, in training, when they come to a meet, it's common that they might not do quite as much because you're doing nine lifts over the course of eight hours. Right. What about of... <clears throat> also the fact that they never squat bench and deadlift in the same right, session? Right, right, yeah. exactly. And that's what got gets me with any time I do, and I've not like I've done many, but any time I do any sort of competition is that cumulative effect you always forget. So when you see like Brian Shaw at the Arnold lifting a 555 pound stone, that's pretty impressive on its own. But he's done. But look after. at what he did for two days before that. Yeah. Exactly. You know. Well, like, even like when we do our strong, like our strongman competition, like at the end of that, we complain. We complained do? about it for a week afterwards. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, and at- it was crazy to see how how I think everybody performed so much better the day of when we were doing everything. Then it was like a weekend where we would train maybe two or three things. Yeah. Like we everybody just did so much better, and I think that's another thing with competition where you're like. Well, I got to do this now, and it's I got to do the best I can and... because there's somebody watching, and like it yeah. kind of matters. Yeah. So I just you just there's a little for more sure. Out there. But by the last event, like we did at at the Massonomic Strongman competition, was the Atlas Stones, and you know you could tell you know people were getting tired from right. the yeah. day's worth of events. Definitely. Yeah, I mean I couldn't do fucking 
the weight that I could do in yeah, practice. Right. You know? That's right. what I was worried about. I'm like, well, I know I, I know I probably can't get the last one, but if I can get to the second to the last one, I don't think many other people are going to yeah, be able to. Well, that's exactly what, I thought. what happened. And I couldn't yeah. even get to the third to the last one, yeah. I don't and think. And you had done those easily. Without tack. Yeah. Yeah, easily. Right. Yeah. Well, but, and I'd seen, yeah, a lot of other people get up to the second to last one, and then me, I think it was where me and, you know, me and Tanner – Dude, we're the only ones yeah. that got the yeah. Yeah, last there's one. like three or four people that were right there. really flirting with it. Yeah. But uh and they're I probably just, all I just people figured that, that, done it before. Uh, that I just I just wiped all the water off the ones before it yeah, for you thank guys. You. That, that actually was uh <laughs> um on a uh, variable that we hadn't planned, you know, yeah, that you don't for plan sure. for is you don't live with wet soaking stones. wet. Yeah. Also, it didn't make it easier. I'll when, say when, that. when I think back about that, like how fucking dangerous was that? Because we're on mats that are fucking rubber and slippery when they're uh-huh. wet. Oh yeah, you fall, you slip, and you that fall thing lands with a, on you. Fall with a break three, your neck, break yeah. your back, break. Something. Fall with a three hundred pound atlas stone in your lap. Yep. Everything that. Is a little dangerous, right? <laughs> like well, strong yeah. man stuff. It's just like, heavy. True. And it's all, I guess I just it's not, over your head. It's yeah, your or, body. Like, like, you're carrying five hundred pounds of weights that mm, could land on someone's foot any gift. You know, right? Yeah. I just People picture a three hundred pound atlas stone mashing genitalia. <laughs> no, which yeah, seems, yeah, seems worse to me. Yeah. <laughs> Great publicity though for yeah. the event. I mean, who wouldn't hear about that? Guys, you know? last year this guy got his dick smashed. <laughs> it by an literally, exploded. you are not going to want to miss this year. <laughs> yeah. What's going to happen this year? I heard they're lighting the stones on fire this yeah, year, right? <laughs> but yeah, t- the whole training competition thing. I think, I think it was Eric Lillybridge. He always does his. I don't know if it's just squatting or if it's everything, but he always times it. Uh-huh. So I think he does all of his sets or all of his singles with like five minutes or something in between each each mm-hmm. rep or each set, just so it's similar to to competition. Mm-hmm. Right. But but like when I see yeah. how how guys will do so well in a competition, and, but then it's it's like, well, geez, I mean, I've seen them deadlift more than that. Yeah. Right. It's because they probably didn't yeah. deadlift. Yeah. Singles, and it, it's it's never and it's also never like the most that they could deadlift. Right. It's the most you can do that, at that the, time yeah. the, on that day. Right. Yeah. That's why I like. Uh, even like Pete Rubish, watch him like deadlift in the gym, and it's like, I think I've seen this guy hit like triples at the weight that he pulled yeah, in a meet. He know? regularly does fifty pounds less in a meet than he does at that. at training or yeah. in training. Because like I've seen him, I've seen him deadlift like in the nine hundreds, you know. Mm-hmm. But then you you think, okay, he's using straps. Mm-hmm. Okay, he's using a deadlift bar, which for some people it might they might be able to lift more without a deadlift bar, but it obviously helps him. But yeah, there's just so many variables that mm-hmm. you don't keep consistent when going from a meet to just but training. That deadlift bar thing, that's something I talked about with Tommy this week, you know, because we have an Oki deadlift bar and then we also have uh, some Texas power bars that don't have the whip. And mm-hmm. both he and I agreed that, uh, you know, personally, at least right now, we might lift better not on the deadlift bar than we do with I it. I think so. Is, is, that, that, are those, is that what they use in competition? There's some meets. Some meets you do use a deadlift bar. Like the APF meet that we've done, <clears throat> they use a deadlift bar. USAPL or IPF does not use a deadlift okay, bar. They they right. use a, a stiff bar. Most other federations mm-hmm. use a mm-hmm. deadlift specific bar. So is it that you can do do less because of the slack? Like a little bit of re, is there a little bit of rebound? I think some of it's just like what you're used to. Comfortable. Yeah, I feel like because I'll switch. Like, I try not to use just the deadlift bar. I, like, I'll switch mm-hmm. off and on. And I think it was two weeks ago when I was doing, like, my week eight sets. And it was like 480 or, or whatever. And I just remember getting it off the ground. I was like, oh, that's easy. And then it, like, right there. It's like, oop, yep, yeah. that's where it feels weird. And then it would just, like, pull me forward. Like, I felt like so many yeah. of them I was getting to be on my toes. Like, you, was, you almost feel like you have the slack out. And there's and then still it, a little more left. And then left. it whips a little bit. And you're like, whoa. Yeah. So I don't know, but but on the other hand, some people I know at our at our gym they already much prefer the deadlift bar. You know they feel like they can pull quite a bit more off of that than they can the regular bar. So that depends a little bit on your pulling style too. Mm-hmm. I how, think it depends how leathery your hands are. That's true oh, because, that because of the grip. Oh yeah, that's bad. But it uh, it depends on how much you jerk versus how steady you pull too. I think mm-hmm. it you know it makes a difference. You're like a like you go in there and you're just like trying to. Grip and rip it. I feel yeah. like it's really gonna throw you off. Like yeah. you have to keep really tight in the bottom and then go up with it, not just get right. up there and just 
try to yank it because then the the whip is just gonna get you on your toes or you're just gonna drop it right because you can't and, hold on to it and so you know so you're basically at the true start of the pull when it really kicks in you're a little bit higher obviously on the deadlift bar because of the because of that whip because of the bend right and i think you know if if i pull off of like a two inch blocks you know if i have the weights sitting on two inch blocks so it's an elevated lift it's less range of motion i actually can't pull quite as much as if i pull all the way from the ground yeah you know so that makes it some people are just that way sticking points yeah right yeah that's why like i think even going back to the strongman thing the the car deadlift like i'm obviously not a better deadlifter than you like you can deadlift more than i can but (laughs) and there's plenty of people there that could probably deadlift more than me but it's just it's at a weird spot because what was it, it right below i think for me it was like right below just my knees. Yeah. knees yeah. yeah so yeah if you're not if you can't start th- from there and i think being tall you're probably not the strongest from the floor okay you know, like, yeah like you're 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 probably not the most people aren't but like your lockout's probably better mm-hmm. than it is way extended at the right. bottom yeah um i don't know, didn't being tall didn't fucking help me any that, <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's a good point you good you point. did do really well at that and then that's another factor too where it's also that was the fourth of five events too so there's like quite a bit of fatigue so maybe yeah you know if i could in practice i felt like i could have done more than what i did in mm-hmm. uh competition but after flipping that tire and yeah. doing a farmer's carry and uh going through the log so many times it's a little harder you know than just being in perfect, like just like okay, let's go. Yeah, like, you're just yeah. Like, oh god. Yeah. Exactly. I, I I heard that we were canceling the tire for next year too. Is that <laughs> I heard tr- the tire just? Truth I heard back? it disappeared. I heard I, the tires just gone. Well, everything's probably going to have to be a little bit bigger. And God, <laughs> maybe we could have a tire rolling instead of a tire flipping. We'll just get it up and you just you just, just roll, roll it. it. Yeah. In uh, one of the early years of World's Strongest Man, they did a tire toss. Oh like God. a discus. I mean, it was like a... Oh, it was like a car tire. Yeah, it was like a big car tire. It was almost maybe a, a small truck tire or something. But uh, that's at the point of World's Strongest Man where they had a lot of w- contestants from different things. So a couple of the contestants were like hammer and discus throwers. Yeah, track athletes. So they have all this technique athletes. down. and Maybe we'll do that, though. Do or, a tire or toss. the... I can't remember what year it was. You told me about it, and I couldn't believe like what you were telling me. The car flipping. Yeah, yeah. And it was like... That's the, the most... Speaking of dangerous, that is the most dangerous strongman event. I definitely. watched that whole thing, and I couldn't believe how many people either had to quit because they got, like... Pinned kind underneath of my, the car. Well, not even that. There was things... <laughs> there was events before that where it was like their name was just, like, crossed off because they... <laughs> it was like they died. Like, they, yeah. got, they, got, they got hurt from something. Like, I think... Oh, what was it like? Something fell off of something and, and it landed on one of the guys. And yeah, then... I think that year Yuka ah- Ahala is yeah, the guy that the won guy it. From so Finland. yeah, so yeah. it was probably in the nineties. Okay, sometime. And yeah, if you go like by the final event, you know they started There's... with the typical eight or ten guys. There's like three guys, three or four guys that haven't been yeah crossed off due to injury, <laughs> like just not surviving. Well, that car, I couldn't believe like. Yeah, you flip in that car, and if it comes back on you, it's a car coming back on you. Like, yeah. it's not, there's no way to change and it. And they, they flipped it sideways, right? Like, oh, yeah. The, the easy yeah. way. Yeah. yeah. But so then, like, after the first guy got his leg caught under there and almost died, they started having spotters. Uh, they had kegs from other competition yeah. mm-hmm. that they, so they were standing on each end of the car, like, ready to place the keg every time they got it halfway flipped up. But that was like, <laughs> That would be that was such a difficult spotting responsibility that also wasn't working. So then it was another... also just as dangerous. For yeah, the it was just like yeah, yeah. You just put three. Let's people put three at risk. people under the car instead right. of just one. <laughs> yeah, I think that's you. You get a little bit too cute with the the events. Yeah, and then it gets fucking out of control. Yeah, I they did, don't do that anymore either. I did see though because mm. I, I thought it was a badass event to do for like the carry where they they completely gutted out this car. And put like some straps. some lifting straps yeah. and through like the inside in the car. Yeah, you stand in the car. Yeah, they cut the top off. Cool. It looks really cool. I was like, oh, we should definitely do this. Except they use a tiny car, the smallest car that I could possibly imagine and existing. It's completely stripped. And it's, and it's, yeah, it's totally stripped. stripped. 
And I, I'm I'm dead serious. And I don't think there is a smaller car that exists. No. And there's this was like I don't remember who was doing it. Was it Pujanowski? Yeah, yeah. That he was does doing look it. Few and he doesn't yeah. look small or weak. <laughs> and and he no, is fucking just barely getting yeah. this thing along. And I was like, well, a lot of the guys barely even take a couple steps. Yeah. With so it. there's like, there's we nothing a, we could do. We need events like that where people just can't even do them. <laughs> like everybody ties because nobody does it. <laughs> that, if, if we tried. To do it, that event would definitely that, be that one would of be those. The event. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't. I was, I couldn't. Figure, I was like, well, how much can that really still weigh? It's but weird. apparently, yeah. it's a lot. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to go through all the trouble of stripping out a car to find out that I can't lift it, yeah. and neither can anyone else. Right. So, um, I guess that's not going to be a, our, our new event. So we're not doing that. I guess probably not. <laughs> that seems reasonable. Uh, <laughs> is, is this a good uh, opportunity to? Oh, Th- this is a new. Okay. S- this is kind of a new podcast segment. Oh, we did it last week, and I brought want- to you by Carl's Jr. Yes. or Hardee's, depending on where you were. Yeah, regionally speaking, yeah. it would be Hardee's here. <laughs> anyway, uh, but I want it to be called uh, "What's in Tanner's Sack." <laughs> yeah, because last week I brought a, my sack, and right. I last week it, it was comes the- everywhere he goes. Yeah, you know? it was <laughs> always with him. Last week in my sack, I had uh, Donnie Thompson's but uh, bow tie. By Spud Inc. And this week, what's in your sack this week? Well, Taylor? let's find out oh when I've got my sack. Kind of want to, I and you guys know. are both familiar what's with what's in my sack here, but oh. I just wanted oh, to talk. Obviously, yeah, I just wanted know. to talk we've about seen the, it. We've seen the pictures. Yeah. I just wanted you guys to see how it comes out. And if you'd like to see what's in Tanner's sack, make sure you follow him on Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually. Ryan, what if you closed your eyes okay, I and I just already. put it in your in your hands and don't <laughs> open your sack? eyes? And, no, well, <laughs> oh, what's I'll just the put sack? the item reach, reach in your hands. Reach into hand. the sack. Where Tanner. is it? <laughs> just wait, I'll, I'll put oh. it in. And you try and tell me if you know what it is. Okay. Just a second, I have to r- ruffle this bag into the microphone a little longer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold your, hold your hands out. Like this way? Yeah. What do you feel? Oh, it's the... Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's the pull thing <laughs> that's right the, yeah yeah yep so you knew so what are these officially called what does it say on there maximum maximum advantage grip made in usa patent pending so the mag the, i think this yeah. is the only thing left that's made in america it's the last thing the that last and thing. that and freedom yeah and carl's jr burgers of course <laughs> our sponsor for the segment sponsoring what's in tanner sack <laughs> So I actually I actually just used that yesterday. I used those quite a bit. I've never used the Sean sp- Sean Arsaga got those right. Yep. Yeah, yep. I've never used this small one, um, because I only ever mess around with the the wider Wide. grip for lat pull ground pull right. downs. But um, Tanner, do you want to describe what they are to the people listening? Yeah, and, and that there's many of them. There's describe three, what was three in sizes. your sack, Tanner. Tell us what was in your sack. Well, in my What's sa- it feel like in my sack today? It's kind of like two nuts that uh, <laughs> just. <didn't>, uh, <laughs> This black thing that you just put it, your hands around. These, these are cable attachments that you would use. We use them on our the pull down machine pretty regularly. You could, I suppose, you could hook them up and do some other exercises. I was doing with. some rows, yeah, like rows you on do the cross rows. Yeah, yeah. I, me and Corey were doing them. Put the slide the yeah all the way down and then just stand up do and do kind of like a, okay something like similar a, to a, a barbell row. Yeah, but yeah. But that with a neutral grip. Yep. So what these do, I don't, I don't know technically how they describe what it is that these do. You almost have to use it to understand. I would say it puts your grip into a natural grip. I would say that's, that's. And I, th- I think the one that I had used is the is the wider one for doing like pull downs. Mm-hmm. Right. And I find with that that I, I always have trouble, actually engaging my lats with yeah. pull downs. I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of a shoulder and upper back guy, mm-hmm. and I'll pull with my pecs. Mm-hmm. And I'll and I'll curve my elbows in, and and I'll almost still pull with like my shoulder, and um, there's no fucking way you can lift that way mm-hmm. with the mag grip. Like mm-hmm. you grab it and you pull, and it you I feel like you're just on this track where you're pulling like right into your yep. lats, and I never get that to that point where I'm weak and falling apart or no. anything. Everything when, stays tight. When you give when you can't go any longer, it's because you're back muscles won't let you go any longer it's because the muscles you're supposed to be yeah. using are, are beat yeah when you use a normal you know a, a, say a straight bar attachment and you you grip it like you would like i feel like fist. once you get this, you can't make a fist no you, you don't make a fist cannot. and i feel like when you make 
when you get tired on a regular one, your wrists start to bend backwards. Mm -hmm. And then it really, you feel it a lot like in your biceps or other parts of your body that you're not. Yeah. I feel like it's because I feel like, I mean, if you flex your bicep, try to flex your bicep without making a fist. It's kind of hard. Yeah. It's at least less effective. That's for sure. Right. So I feel like, yeah, just, you know, how this is set up, you cannot close your fist all the way. Mm -hmm. So it, it does force you to use. Muscles besides muscles in your arms. So, so we yeah, have there's th- a ton of these. Yeah, we have we have three widths of them. Uh, Do we, and that? ours are all neutral grip, but they also they sell them. They sell a pronate, pronate and a supinate. Yeah, and we don't have either of those. We have, all three of ours are all uh, neutral grip, but we have the medium, the wide, and the small. Right. Yep. Ooh, those are. Those I think are the wide expensive. only comes in. Uh, it looks like it, doesn't it? What we have. Yeah, yeah. that would be. Do it this way. Yeah. <laughs> grip. But they're really, before you use them, you, you think is uh, that is just a gimmick or that's like, what is even really the point of that? I already have a pull down attachment. Right. And then when you do use it, it's like, mm, I guess it makes that sense. It, yeah, it does. It does feel different. <clears throat> you know, and for the wide grip, which is, I can only speak on cause that's the one I, mm-hmm. I use, but I mean, it's seven, $75 is like, probably worth it to have Mm -hmm. at least the pull downs that i do become feeling effective Mm -hmm. and i don't fucking hate them which means i'll do them yeah 75 dollars is probably the most expensive pull down attachment that you can buy but it's probably also the best one i would say too. yeah i mean what's the least you're going to spend on one 25 dollars probably so like that's yeah i would say it's they're definitely worth it Mm -hmm. and we've had them now for a few weeks I'd say a month, two maybe. weeks to a month, and ev- I've everyone that has used them is kind of like, oh, that's I kind of like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I I don't think I've used a regular just round bar. Yeah, I no. I, I, I won't anymore. No, until someone tells me I'm fucking yeah. this doing is, something yeah. wrong. Yeah, this just feels better. It, it just I'd, feels more. Natural. It would be hard for someone to convince me not to use this just based off the way it feels in my back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know? mm-hmm. yeah, it feels effective. Yeah, at least. So how do you are do you give a, a rating or are they just kind of like the, the audience just kind of basis product off of how we talked about it oh we i guess we could do like a Some rate informal a, a rating system i don't know if it's a star system two or, sacks way up yeah <laughs> a sack system I, oh yeah i give i give it two sacks two up. sacks out of two yeah yeah I, I would do the same yeah that's good why are there two two, <laughs> two know, separate sack sacks way up? i don't know <laughs> one sack all the way up I dig it. I like I said. I've I've never um I've never enjoyed doing lat pull downs. It seems like it's just not my jam. And I, yeah, they they really make it something that uh, seems to work for me. So, mm-hmm. it's uh what's the website they have? It's maxagrip.com. It's the mag maximum advantage grip. Do they make anything else, or is it just it's I don't just think these? So. I think that's just it's it. not a real elaborate website or anything either. You're gonna no. They have the products and oh, they have reviews. Maybe ours will be on there Ooh, one day. Where, where's the review? That's reviews? at the top. Oh, boy. Another thing I want to start doing oh, is... a rugby player likes it. Okay. Hmm. High-performance <laughs> coach, Australian rules, football. Big John McCarthy. Never heard of he's her. He's a UFC ref. Oh. He's, he's, he's actually probably kind of a badass. Perfect for MMA fitness. Eric the Trainer. Oh, that guy looks pretty legit. <laughs> Do you know who that guy is? The that's, La- that's Lars from uh, oh, uh, it does kind Heavyweights. Of look like him. <laughs> like the, a guy that's supposed to be big. But... The main monster. Kelly Parks, Wyoming State Bodybuilding Champion. Great okay. Western Plains Heavyweight Winner. Rocky Mountain Heavyweight. Is that winner. a man or is that a woman? Kelly, Kelly Parks. Parks. That could be, I don't know. I'm gonna go, dude. Okay, Wyoming body. Statistically builder. speaking, it's yeah. most likely. Yeah. Uh, we got physical therapy. Hmm. Way too long. <laughs> Way too long, Patrick. 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 A doctor. Dougie, There's a doctor. Doctor McDougie. Oh, McDougal. Yeah. Oh, that's an I. I thought it was an L. <laughs> doctor McDougie. McDougal is still pretty funny. Too, Teach though. me how to McDougie. Yeah, right? that's what I was thinking. Uh, arthritis, uh, apparently everybody loves this. Thing. Everybody That's loves the it. Main thing you can take At away. least these eight seven, people. eight people who you don't know like it, <laughs> and us three people who you don't know like it. So, so that's us. eleven people you don't know. That's don't eleven like sacks. Yeah. So eleven, 11 sacks, sacks up, <laughs> way up. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what about uh, before we before we call it a day? We've got. Um, I'm assuming this is the week that 
Uh, Tommy's deadlift article is going to be out. Is that, that correct? That should be out and live for you to view right now. Tommy, the the defay with the most hair. Mm. At on least his, on his on head. His head yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have a pretty hairy back, so... <laughs> Is that the title you take, for sure? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. That's, that's unfortunate. <laughs> you know? Depends. So, See, it still that. depends we on like, what you're into. Yeah. Yeah. Some people like stuff like that. So know. that's going to be on... Um, that's going to be on the website. Yep. I taught him everything he knows about deadlifts. It is that's the, actually the whole... That's all, yeah. all of it, right? <laughs> yeah. It's, like, yeah. it's an so interview it's, with me. It's, uh, it's basically, I think, over about a six month period or so how he got his uh one rep max deadlift to increase uh, about 50 pounds or so mm-hmm. and it's actually uh, i think it actually was a tighter timeline than that yeah maybe but it we're was. just being a little more reasonable with since he's writing it six months after it's yeah good, and, and it's actually gone up even more than this since then mm-hmm. yeah, um, what's he what's his well speaking of that this this last week we would if he was here we'd probably talk about it but uh he set PRs in all three of his lifts mm-hmm. this week. Yeah, I was there for the the bench. Yeah, three thirty five. Benchy yeah. bench three thirty five, which is most easy. before that was three, maybe three twenty five or three twenty. Yeah, maybe it was three twenty five. Yeah. So he got about ten or fifteen pounds on that, mm-hmm. and his deadlift uh, sets. sets he did four seventy five for sets of five, which the most he had done before that is four fifty five, and then uh, squats he did four four twenty for his sets of three. Yep, five by three. Yeah, so basically all of his Gone stuff up, is way up. Which is pretty, and it's pretty big jumps and all of Yeah, that. yeah. Yeah. So, so is this a, just like a steroid article? Yeah, or? A, I, was, and I, <laughs> I guess I was we'll just find like, out. Like, read it Ryan's out. been setting quite a few PRs, and then Nick in the gym uh, set like a 35-pound squat that PR. Thick, thick Nick? Thick Nick mm-hmm. uh, set like a 35-squat PR. So I, yeah, I'm saying steroids. I would guess. Yeah, like yeah. I don't know what the hell else could you guys yeah. could be doing no <laughs> no <laughs> um but yeah so he kind of covers a handful of things do you want to go over a couple of things or are we just going to defer everybody to the website well i would say check out the website there For sure because we got pictures videos and I, I would say it's actually could be a helpful if you are someone out there that wants your deadlift to be better than it is right now it's actually probably a pretty helpful article yeah that i there's a couple uh there's no quick fix one trick thing but there's a few if things. there was we'd get more clicks on yeah the articles yeah for sure but there Maybe are that should be the title <laughs> Man my, finds my one, one easy way one to increase his deadlift 50 pounds in four months yeah. but there is a couple actually good uh tips that he used that you know anecdotally really worked well for him so mm-hmm. things that probably aren't best to be um delivered via an audio only podcast no. let's just talk about it and then nobody will read it yeah. well no i'd, I'd like to i'd like it. to read you guys this article <laughs> verbatim <Audiobook. laughs> but no so go to uh massonomics.com click on the it's gonna be under the articles and videos tab and that should be uh should be in the top couple there yep. check it out that'll also be on our facebook page as well yeah which, like us on facebook are you not liking us on facebook any of you? If you haven't liked us on Facebook, it means that you don't like us on. Didn't Facebook. you just like us on Facebook with a? It was like it was like within the year. Yeah, I think it was uh, in 2016. I liked the page. And yeah, like, you said something to me like, "Saw that you liked the page uh, yesterday." I was like, "Yeah, I don't know. I just thought I did." Because so. obviously, I follow it or, yeah, or I'm friends right. with the page. I was like, oh, "I'll like it." And I'm just like, kind of late to the party, I guess. But whatever. So well. Anything else we got to get out today, guys? I don't know. This is usually where I say no. This is where Tanner's got seven yeah. or eight things <laughs> after he lets me start the wrap up. No, because I'm I'm thinking hard if there is something, and right now I can honestly say there's nothing in my mind. I think the key going forward is going to be to think hard before, before I ask the question. Yeah. Because right when I ask down. the question, you start then, you, then I'm you frozen. start thinking hard, and it's a yeah. pause, which means yeah. and let's shut her down. Yeah. Yeah. So no, I can't think anything of anything else happened this week that we got to cover while I was gone. We had a pretty good turnout on Saturday at the gym. It was quite the quite the little party. That was a really weird thing. It was like seven. There was nine nine, nine? people okay, there. Yeah. Usually on Saturday you might find one of you yeah. know randomly when you go and there's one uh, or two other people. Yeah, because I text you because Kevin wanted to go. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll go. Like whatever. Was everybody's schedules during the week all fucked up? No, or was I, it just, just like, I just I think it's a, no, I think stuff. I think it's a winter thing. Like yeah. it's a snowy winter. Like yeah, it's like, oh, different. I'll go to the gym now on yeah. this. Yeah, I got there. I'm yeah. like, I don't even know what I'm gonna do. And then Larry was deadlifting. Thank God, there's always curls. 
Right. That's, right. that's, I, no, I that's did, what you do when you don't know what else to do. I did pause <laughs> pause deadlifts like right right yeah. at the knee. I was like, I'll do these. Like I, did, yeah. I only went up to three fifteen. Did like a couple sets of that. I was like, I don't think I'm gonna get sore from this, but it's like yeah. it's something to do. So. Yeah. Yeah, just random stuff. Yeah, that anything I do on the weekends is I'll do like a bunch of conditioning or something on a Saturday. If I'm doing anything outside of my just going in to have a gym day, it is mm-hmm. all just a pump sesh. Mm-hmm. Right. Make sure it's a sleeveless shirt day. No shirt day. <laughs> Every no day. pants. No pants. Every day is no shirt day. Yeah. So that'll do it for us today, you guys. Um, unless Tanner wants to cut me off midway through here with some something. something I almost else here feel like i'm letting myself down that i don't have something to interrupt it Do with you have but another like, sack we could maybe look at no i just brought the, my one sack but yeah i'm gonna try to i'm i might have already ran out of things on week two of this, the sack this, thing this weekly feature that yeah. we've been doing is, is but i'm gonna i'm gonna try and continue on. that yeah it's fun yeah i like it close your close your eyes and reach into my sack <laughs> tell me what you feel yeah that's a fun game i so, liked it um, that'll do it for us today. Thanks a lot for listening. Um, if you're listening, make sure you go to YouTube and check it out. You can check out some of our older episodes on video there. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're watching, click subscribe. Um, Facebook, like us on Facebook. Uh, what else we got? Go to iTunes. Rate us. Give us some. Give Rate us a five rating. Stars. Yeah, yeah. We need to be rated. That's the hardest thing to get you people to do is to rate us on iTunes. Yeah. How many we got now? Uh, I think like fifteen. Thousand, hundred, fifteen hundred. Oh, one other thing. Oh, so, okay. Just Here just, we go. Just kidding. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I watched Austin Powers today. If that matters. Oh, I love that movie. That Did you not, watch it? That does not matter. That does not matter. <laughs> okay, let's talk about it. Those <laughs> movies do not hold up. <laughs> yes, they do. I'm putting my foot down <laughs> three times. Damn it. <laughs> the Will Ferrell character. Mm. Yeah. He's like trying yeah. to ask him. <laughs> Oh, I can't stand to be asked a question three times. <laughs> oh, by the way, before we do wrap up, did uh, did you guys did you see the party the the rest of the party episodes? I haven't did you watched watch part them all? Two. I watched um, part one. I watched part one, which I thought was pretty wasn't too bad, and yeah. I watched part two today, which gets a little bit hairier little than hairy. part one. Is it when like we're all talking and then yeah. we just start talking about weird like high school? Stuff it might be a little hard to follow. Yeah. <laughs> So stupid. That's good. <laughs> That's good. So you can go back and check out the party cast episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, those are interesting. They're there. Least. They certainly are there. Our best yeah. work, you yeah. could say. Yeah. So, but uh, iTunes, YouTube, Facebook, that'll cover us. Go to the website. Scroll to the bottom of the page. You can sign up for our newsletter. Go to the store while you're there. Click the big shop tab when you get there. Buy some stuff. It's all cool. It'll make you look cool. Well, look at that. Our friend there, he has a hat. Yeah, Larry Legend. Larry cool? Legend's this is wearing a the hat. Real human skull, by the way. That's uh, it's Larry's. <laughs> Larry's human skull. Yeah. Sorry, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you can buy cool hats like that, skull not included. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, that'll do it. I'm Tyler. You can find me on Instagram at Tyler F and Stone. That's Tyler E F F I N Stone. Oh, great job on the spelling. I'll see. I'll, I'll try to. I, what I don't want to do is have be like, oh, he said Tyler F. and Stone. So they're like Tyler F. U. C. K. Right. You know, so. Right. Smart. Ryan, how can they get a hold of you? You can find me on Instagram, flying Ryan underscore D, F L Y I N R Y A N underscore D. Emphasis on the D. The D. And Tanner? Oh, I, the Massonomics Instagram page at Massonomics. M A S S E N O M I C S. Massonomics. <laughs> An- anywhere else? Root of origin. English. <laughs> Can you use that in a sentence, please? I love Massonomics so much that I buy a lot of shirts and hats from their website. <laughs> and certainly rated them on, in- on iTunes. <laughs> yeah. Five so. stars. Anywhere else that they can find you, Tanner? The yellow pages. The yellow pages. Yeah. <laughs> My yeah. landline. <laughs> you can call me on my landline phone. We, I do have a landline phone in my house, but it's not hooked up to anything. It's hooked up into the wall. It just I don't think you can call me on it. Oh, if you can, funny. I don't know my number. <laughs> I'm going to get a hold of you on that thing. <laughs> All right, guys. That'll do it. Thanks a lot for listening. Stay strong. You just heard the Massonomics podcast. With your ears, you're welcome. Check us out on Facebook, find us on Instagram at Massinomics and make sure you visit Massinomics.com and buy some of that sweet Massinomics gear.
from your friends at Masonomics Studio, home of the world's strongest podcast. Stay strong.